Hi, welcome back to A Better Biomed. Today we're going to go over power supplies, or more specifically, switch mode power supplies versus linear power supplies. Power supplies isolate the user from the dangerous mains electricity while providing a lower, more controllable DC voltage to power analog and digital circuits. Power supplies also separate the electrically noisy power system from the sensitive electronics. This separation increases serviceability of equipment as the power supply is the most likely point of failure. Switch mode power supplies are much smaller and lighter than traditional linear power supplies with the same output rating. Linear power supplies step AC through the transformer at 50 to 60 hertz. Their main transformer core is usually comprised of laminated sheets of steel. Steel has an inherent magnetic hysteresis which limits the frequency of incoming power. So they're large, heavy, and inefficient. But they're electronically quiet, which is why you'll find them around measurement electronics and audio electronics. Switch mode power supplies take the mains AC power at 50 to 60 hertz, then they rectify the power to a high voltage DC. Next, the DC is switched at 25 kilohertz all the way up to 100 or 150 kilohertz through a small ferrite core based transformer. Ferrite has almost no magnetic hysteresis after power is removed, which makes it ideal for high frequency use. After the transformer brings the power down to a select usable level, it's rectified again to DC. Because of the simplicity of linear power supplies and their gradual replacement by switch mode power supplies, I'm going to be going into detail on only switch mode power supplies. Switch mode power supplies all consist of four major component systems. Understanding those systems will help you diagnose failures and perhaps even save you thousands in power supply replacements. The first system is the power input system. This usually contains the mains input port or wires, fuses, MOVs, which are metal oxide varistors, which are power surge suppression components, the thermistor, inductor windings, and filter capacitors. The power comes in and immediately goes through the fuse, then through EMI filter transformers, along with filter caps which smooth out the spikes and the dips, and finally past the MOV which explodes in the event of a power surge, and then a thermistor which auto-regulates the current. The second system is the rectification system, which consists of individual diodes in an array or a bridge rectifier diode large smoothing capacitors and sometimes a thermistor instead of a thermistor in the input circuit. The power comes into the rectifier as an AC sine wave then exits the rectifier as a high voltage DC ripple. This ripple DC is smoothed in the smoothing capacitors then exits on the high voltage DC power rail. The third system is the high frequency switching system and it consists of the MOSFET, the step down transformer and the MOSFET controller. The high voltage DC enters the MOSFET which is turned on and off at 25 kilohertz to 100 kilohertz or even 150 kilohertz by the MOSFET controller which makes high frequency AC. The high frequency AC enters into the compact main transformer and exits at various step down AC voltages. The fourth and last major system in a switch mode power supply is the output rectification system. It contains one or more rectifier diodes, smoothing caps, and feedback opto-isolator. The lower voltage AC enters a diode and exits as low voltage DC ripple. The DC ripple is smoothed through the smoothing capacitors and is fed to both the output port and the opto-isolator feedback loop. The opto-isolator allows the MOSFET controller to measure the output for power correction without directly being connected to the now isolated output. Some power supplies have a standby power system which provides a low voltage DC to power a remote control detect or power button power on function. TVs, audio equipment, and PC power supplies are some of the main examples. This voltage will be created by a small transformer, usually next to the main transformer. The standby slash power on output signal will be at the output connector and will return to the power on pin and activate the rest of the power supply. The power on signal will usually short to a neighboring pin to turn on the power supply for testing purposes. Power Supply Troubleshooting 
Most problems in a power supply are caused by the output filter capacitors or the high frequency switching MOSFET. Blown fuses usually indicate other issues with the power supply. Don't just replace a fuse and expect it to work. Capacitors can often show visual signs of failure or eminent failure. Any capacitors with signs of bubbled ends or leaks should be replaced before any further troubleshooting, preferably before turning the power supply on at all. The high frequency switching MOSFET will almost always fail in a short instead of an open. The short circuit will often blow the AC input fuse and leave the MOSFET exploded and charred. To test a MOSFET, the first step is to test it in circuit with a meter on continuity. No legs of the MOSFET should have low resistance or a short. If anything less than 5000 ohms is detected, the MOSFET needs to be removed from the circuit and tested alone for a short. Replace the MOSFET if low resistance or a short is detected when it's out of the circuit. If the power supply has a power on signal, it will usually also have the signal voltage written on the board. If the measured voltage at that pin is 0.1 of a volt less than written on the board, start checking capacitors, particularly at the output filter. Any dips in the voltage do signify failure. There's no standby power and the fuse is good. Check the secondaries of the small transformer with a meter on AC for voltage. Thanks for watching this video on power supplies. I hope you learned something. I know I did making this video. If you liked the video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. I'll be releasing more troubleshooting and electronics principles videos in the near future.